Welcome to Chicago Theater Review. Welcome to a cold Sunday morning in Chicago. Gail is with me and Devlin, our reviewer, is with us. And we're going to talk about some of the great shows that are going on in Chicago right now. First is at Marriott Lincolnshire is Legally Blonde. Gail saw it. She, what did you think of it? I, you know, uh, Mark Robin is, uh, to me, one of the best directors. He actually does not live in Chicago anymore. He moved away, but he comes back to Marriott to do the show, uh, to do shows there. And, wow, well, there's an echo in here. <laughs> and he is, um, he is really phenomenal. And he took this show, Legally Blonde, which was in Chicago. It was a movie, obviously, with Reese Witherspoon. And he just sort of made it his own. Um, I know we, you were there. We all just loved it. We just thought he did a fabulous job with it. His his forte is his casting. He always manages to cast a show perfect. Um, he's a choreographer too. His choreography was great. And I can't say enough about him and Marriott Theater, of course. We always said if we had to get a subscription to a theater, probably be Marriott. So. And so that's our first show. The second show that we're going to talk about no is... What? No clip to that one. No clip. Next, next show we're going to talk about is American Idiot. And this is with the musical group Green Day. Green, Green Day. Green Green the Day. music of Green Day. And let me say a couple things about American Idiot. Um, they burst on the scene, I think it was in the, correct me guys, if you, uh, the 80s, um, late 80s, early 90s. Um, their show, it's an hour and 40 minute show and it's based on the American Idiot album. Um, Here's the thing, it, their, their music is so raw, it's so uncensored, um, not really a show for kids. Um, I did bring some 27-year-olds that said, you know, if you get tickets to American Idiot, I'd love to go. They loved it, they're huge fans of Green Day. I think at the end, um, they, they, the entire cast comes out on the stage with their guitars and they all sing the song, which we all remember from the last episode of Seinfeld, <laughs> um, which I know is ca not called the time of your life, but that's how everybody refers to it. But, and it was a very touching moment. but. I thought that the show was, was just, it was so well done. It was so quick. The hour and 40 minutes went by incredibly fast. Um, if you're a big fan of Green Day and their music, please don't miss the show. It's only in town for two weeks. If you're not a fan of uh, foul language, sex on stage, do not get tickets to Green Day. You will waste your money. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so let's, well, we're let's, gonna show let's so that's American Idiot that's playing at the Ford Theater, and that's only here for another week, right? Um, it was here for, yeah, it's here till the end next of, week. Till the end, the end of next, of next week. week. So from there, we're going to go to our next show, which is at Profiles, and that is The Bachelorette. Um, this got Jeff recommended, which surprised everyone that's seen it. It's basically a story of three unhappy friends who show up to uh, 10 years later to one of their friends on bachelorette party and after a bathtub of alcohol they really let loose on what's going on. So well, that's bachelorette and that's at Profiles Theater and that's playing until March 16th. Next we're going to go to an opening that actually opens today at the Lyric Opera and that is Showboat. Uh, if anybody's been watching this show for the last five years you know one of our best guests has been Renee Matthews and she will be starring in Showboat. Um, it's an excellent show and I highly recommend it. Let's, now everybody's used to the musical, so they're not, now that came out in 1927, now they're turning it into an opera. And they will still be using subtitles because when they sing, even in American stuff, it, when it's sung in the opera, opera type setting, you can't understand the words. But from what I hear, the set is supposed to be phenomenal. We'll know this afternoon. <laughs> so that, that, that brings you in. Yes. So from Quest Theater, why don't you do the introductions? This is Jason Bowen, and you play P.T. Barnum. I do. And you are a founding member of Quest Theater. I am a founding member of Quest, yes. So let's talk a little bit, first of all, about what you've done. I was reading your bio, and we were just talking about it. You did this Barry Manilow thing called The Drunkard, which I had not heard of. Right. I, I thought I knew everything in the world about Barry Manilow. Well, now there's something new. I know. It's amazing. Um, you also, I found this very interesting, you worked on a cruise line. Yes, I worked for Norwegian Cruise Lines for a while. I was a cruise director, master of ceremonies. And how did you like that? You know, I had a great time. Um, staying on the board in the Mediterranean and uh, going to uh, Egypt and Istanbul and Italy uh, multiple times in one year is a pretty amazing feat. So, uh, but when you spend time on a cruise ship, you're in a room about as big as the stage the majority of your life. And then when you leave the room, you're on you know, the ship all the time. You're, you're the face of the ship. Um, and really with uh, 
with Quest, that's what I do as well. You know, it's um, making sure that our mission of our company is getting out there, just like I was making sure the mission of Norwegian was getting out there as well to all of our guests. Tell us about the mission of, it really is a unique mission right. that you have. What is your mission? Uh, you know, when I moved to Chicago about 13 years ago, uh, I did a lot of theater all over the city. Um, I think we talked about this before, a lot of times when you're in a show, there's more people in the uh, cast than there's on, on stage, or I'm sorry, more people in the cast than there's in the audience. It gets a little disheartening. Um, so I felt like there was a disconnect of what was happening uh, in theater in, in general in Chicago. So a group of friends of mine that went to school together, um, friends that I'd worked with, decided to start a company and do theater for everybody. Um, and our biggest mission of our company is to make it free. That way anybody can participate, nobody's excluded, um, because theater is a necessity, it's not a privilege. Um, that's why we make it free. And that was a little hard sometimes for people to understand um, that we might have been in competition with people. That's not the case at all. We want to do theater that um, a family can come to, that with kids. We have tons of kids in our audiences, but we also have groups um, from retirement homes. Um, we have groups of, uh, of couples that come to our shows, older groups, younger groups, um, a huge base of different ethnicities um, and backgrounds and, and incomes. And um, you know, one of, a review we got for one of our shows actually was The Drunkard, um, was that we think of theater as party, where you can come, you can have a great time. You don't have to um, overthink too much. You can have a great time and be affected in a, an emotional way, in a fun way. That's really the way Barnum is. You know, um, his mission was to excite people, get them stirred up, and get them to start acting. And um, that's what we do. It's, we're very passionate about that. Because you've had some great shows in the past. Mm -hmm. I was looking at, your re at the, all the different reviews. You had the last show was called, what, Three Times or Three X? Um, our last show was called Inner Love. Inner Love. And yeah. then the show before that was uh, The People's Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of, we call ourselves The People's because we're a theater for the people. Um, uh, when we met with Mayor Daly quite a few years ago, he called us a theater with a conscience. Um, we were doing theater that, that meant something to people, that affected people in different ways. And we just adopted the name. Uh, it fits perfectly with what we do. You know, we do, uh, obviously we have our viewers at our shows and we have uh, different uh, people come to our, our productions, but who we're really doing it for is, is for our people. Um, and we'll have a show today. Um, we're artists in residence at St. Gregory the Great in Andersonville, which is the most beautiful church in Chicago. Thank you, St. <laughs> Greg's. Um, <laughs> hey, you know, you've got to, you, by the nature of what we do, by offering free theater, people want to help. And that's, we can't, um, we can't say, we can't be more grateful. Um, we wouldn't be where we were if it wasn't for St. Gregory, if it wasn't for the phenomenal actors, the designers, um, and any, our board of directors, our audience that helps support what we do. Because if it wasn't for them, our free company wouldn't have survived for 10 years. And, and you take donations. We take donations. After and you said you're usually pretty full. Well, you know, we, you it, that's an amazing kind of thing. We seat 100 people, um, and we have to turn people away. We always take reservations. Um, there's no credit card, obviously, so we, uh, there may be no shows. But then we have a waiting list of people that want to come. So we are never really at a loss to fill our audiences. And I sometimes get, I we told this too, is I get kind of de depressed or upset when we only have 50 people. But you know, a lot of companies in Chicago would, would want, kill to have 50 people. So we're very right. fortunate. You know, and I always plug after all of our shows, there's th hundreds of theaters in Chicago. Go and support them. Um, we hundreds. feel like- Hundreds. Hundreds, they're all over the place. They come up every day. Um, well, last count, there's 142 theaters companies in I've been Chicago. doing this 15 years, and there's still theaters that I'm just now going to. Sure. I mean, it's amazing, all the storefront theaters. But this is what theater should be. It Absolutely. Should, it should it's be, a collaborative effort. You know, theaters become more about, you know, you get your downtown theaters that are right. interested in making money and charging quite a bit. Sometimes you just want to go to the theater. You want to forget about your whole Absolutely. day, your whole week, you know, life in general. And, you, you know, you just want to have a, 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 a nice, you know, evening at the theater. and. It seems like your theater allows that opportunity. We do, and like people. I said, you know, we, we love having children in our audiences. We love when parents bring their kids. A lot of times, uh, we'll hear kids talking to their parents, explaining what's happening because the parent doesn't know. <laughs> you know, it's, that's what's amazing is that there's a connection between, um, li in live theater, there's just a connection that the audience gives an actor, and an actor gives an audience. That's just not there in movies. I love movies. I probably haven't gone to one in two years. I'm too busy. <laughs> I can't afford it. I, if I'm going to go below 50 bucks on a, on a movie, I may as well go to see live theater where I actually care about what's happening on, on stage and care about those actors. Um, but every cent that goes into the buckets that people give us go right back to our company. Um, we've always stipend all of our performers and our designers. Um, you know, it, obviously theater in Chicago is not something you're going to make a living wage at um, a lot of the time. I mean, I know that. I'm an actor. I do print and film as well. 
Um, you also you have a full time job. At, I do. I work at, at Northwestern, Northwestern University. At Northwestern, thanks. Um, <laughs> we're open to Flader Mouse actually in two weeks. I, I right. I was reading Are about that. Are you going to come check that out? So. I I just actually I, you know what actually I think uh, Marla Lampert is doing. Yes, Marla Lampert. Yes. Yeah, Marla Lampert's a friend of mine. Oh, we just I was just talking about this with her boyfriend yesterday. So oh, she's wonderful. doing the choreography. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about your children's program. Sure. Because you do, is that, before we run out of time, which the show always does, tell us what's coming up. Did you have a summer camp also? We do. We have Kids Quest Summer Camp. Well, we ran a summer camp last year for one week, and this summer it was such a huge hit um, that we're going to be running a few of them next summer. And on our website, which is, do I say that out here? Say yes. the website. www.questensemble.org. You can enroll your child in our kids' camp. Uh, there's different age groups. We teach puppetry. We teach improv, mask work. Um, really whatever uh, uh, forms of theater that we do, which is just about everything. We, uh, you saw with Barnum, we do a lot of spectacle. Um, we taught a couple of the actors to walk on stilts. I don't know if we necessarily teach the children to walk on stilts, but uh, there's a lot we do. Um, we will, like I said, we want to affect people, and whatever we can do to make that happen, whether it's makeup, costumes, um, any kind of spectacle, that's what we do. And this I, workshop's going to be a great time. I get parents that stop me all the time saying, what can I do with my kids during the summer? Because they're working. And I, right. I, I keep telling them there's summer camps. And they go, yeah, but they're $1,000. I go, no, there are a lot of other summer camps that Absolutely. you can go to. Absolutely. And, and you know, and the other thing is, is, you know, you were talking about movies. And a lot of times I, I um, you know, I'll say, I'll call someone and say, hey, you know, I have tickets for something. And they'll say, oh, great. Is it um, American Idiot? Is it Jersey Boys? And I'll right. say, no, it's uh, blah, blah, a, a theater that... And for people who are really passionate about theater, you know, this is kind of what it's all about. Exactly. Devlin, you know, can attest that too. It's about the the small theaters, you know, the theaters that, that don't, you know, that, that like not the Marriott's, not the Drury Lane Oakbrook's, but the small theaters that, that, and there's absolutely that do great work wrong. but need a voice, you know. We were actually just talking about that in the, uh, in the green room. Um, the Broadway in Chicago and the larger theaters in the city are great ways to get people to come to see theater th that they know about. Um, and or to shows. support the city. Exactly. Right. And right. then it's a, almost like a gateway. Um, they're, they're, then they realize, oh, there's a lot more storefront theater in the city that are doing amazing work. Um, I have a lot of friends that work all over the city uh, mm -hmm. that are doing amazing shows. Um, but because they're the storefront, or as people say, the smaller theaters, I mean, most of these theaters have budgets that are just as equal to a larger theater. Um, they may seem smaller because they're in a smaller space. They may seem smaller because they don't have um, multi-million dollar lighting. Um, but really, I think it, the core of it with live theater is the heart, the passion, and the drive. And I, I'm fortunate enough to be with a group of people that I work with at Quest and with Barnum that we're able to do that. So well, I want to stop, think, I wanna I stop we, real I quick because call. someone just called in. Uh oh. <laughs> Yay. Is it my mom? <laughs> and they hung up. <laughs> it was my mom. <laughs> okay, well. Thanks for call. Is the caller there? <laughs> and what, I'm full down. <laughs> uh, is the caller's gone? Okay. Well. He's gone. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, so. okay, moving on until they call <laughs> back again. Um, so, so this is sort of, you know, this is our mission, too, is, you know, to give a voice to these theaters. Right. There is absolutely no reason for people not to go out to Quest now because uh, you can't say it's a money issue because you it's take free. donations. We take donations. So um, I think people really should get out and see your show. And um, again, can you give the website? Sure. It's www.questensemble.org. And you can make your reservations online that way. Um, that's the best way to do it because it'll go directly in. It'll also tell you if there's a wait list. And don't worry if there is a wait list. We always have uh, people that n don't fulfill their, uh, their reservation. So you, you may just well get in. So um, we'd love to have you. We love have people coming to our shows that are new um, and exposing them to something exciting. What's coming up next? Uh, the Neverland. It's oh. an adaptation of Peter Pan. Totally original. Um, six characters, six actors playing multiple characters throughout the show. And that will be next summer. And that'll be next summer. You got it. Okay. Okay, then that's it. Uh, we just got the word. We, <laughs> We're out Jason, of time. Jason, thank you so well, thank much. You. And be sure to go out to Quest. And all this information also will be on our website as well. Devlin, thank Should you. Should be up today. It, the, the review will be up. Thank you very much. Um, that's it. From Chicago Theater Review, I'm Frank Gale Devlin. We'll see you next week.